All right, so in this problem, we're working with steam entering through a nozzle. We're going to be using the energy balance formula to kind of solve this problem out. So I went ahead and drew a schematic over here. So you have your nozzle right over here. You have your entrance on the left or your inlet on the left, and you have your exit on the right. So we have our conditions on either side of it. So we have the pressure, temperature, the velocity, and on the other side, we have the pressure, temperature, and we don't have the velocity. We do have the mass flow rate. We have the heat transfer being equal to zero as we're told to neglect heat transfer potential energy also equal to zero so you could say that the inlet and the exit are at the same elevation um, and we're also told to find the area at the inlet and exit and if i didn't mention already the velocity at the exit so starting with part a where we find the exit velocity you might remember the formula of mass flow rate or m dot let me fix that up the m dot is equal to velocity times area divided by specific volume. Um, and while you would think you could use this formula to find the velocity, you actually can't because you don't have that exit area. So to find that exit area, we're going to use the mass balance or actually the energy balance equation over this configuration. So with our energy balance equation defined, we have zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate distributed into what comes in minus what comes out. So you have the mass flow rate times the inlet enthalpy minus exit enthalpy plus, and all these are going to be in their own brackets, you have the entrance velocity squared minus the exit velocity squared divided by two. This is your kinetic energy right over here. And then you, you add to that your gravity times change in elevation z1 minus z2. And this is your potential energy right over here. Now, I know it looks like a lot, but we're actually going to cancel a lot of units here. So we'll start off with that heat transfer is going to be equal to zero. So we'll cross that out. Also, power of a nozzle just doesn't exist. So you're going to cancel that out as well. And then you have, you know, potential energy as we're told above. So we can go ahead and cancel that out as well. So when you condense it down, this whole mess up here turns into this simple equation right down here. And again, we're looking for that exit velocity, so let's go ahead and rearrange to find that exit velocity. So after some algebraic rearrangement, you distribute the mass flow rate to the enthalpy as well as the kinetic energy. And then you bring the kinetic energy over to the other side and you can get rid of that mass flow rate. You isolate for that exit velocity. You'll have the exit velocity is equal to 2 times the difference in enthalpy plus the square of the inlet velocity. So now we can just plug in our numbers, but we do need to find those enthalpies. So we'll start by finding H1. So H1 is going to be at 280C and 20 bar. So we turn to table A3 and we go to uh, 280C or 20 bar actually. So 20 bar has a saturation temperature of 212 Celsius. So obviously we're higher than that. We're at 280, so we're in the superheated region. Turn to table A4. It was 20 bar and 280C and we have a... Uh, what was it? A twenty nine seventy six point four kilojoule per kilogram enthalpy. So twenty nine. Whoops, twenty nine seventy six point four was it? So your enthalpy at the inlet is twenty nine seventy six point four kilojoules per kilogram. As for the exit, so H two. So you gotta find it at ten cel one eighty Celsius and seven bar. So we turn to ta the table A three. 7 bar, you have 165. So once again, you're in that superheated region because you're at 180 degrees Celsius. Turn to table A4 and you can go to 7 bar, 180C. And you have 2799.1 as your enthalpy. So now we have our inlet enthalpy, our exit enthalpy, as well as our entrance velocity. So we can go ahead and plug everything into this formula here. So you'll have that your exit velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times uh, enthalpy at the inlet was 2976.4 minus the exit of 2799.1. And notice that your units here don't add up if you're using kilojoules per kilogram and meters squared per second squared. So you do have to add a conversion factor of 1000. So you're going to multiply this by 1000. And I'll explain that afterwards in a minute. 
And then to this, you add that square velocity, which is just 80 meters per second squared. So if we do some dimensional analysis of this formula here, on the left here of velocity, you have meters per second, which is obviously correct. And then over here, you have the square velocity, which be meters squared per second squared. And then it gets a little complicated with that enthalpy being kilojoules per kilogram. Well, just remember that a kilojoule is equal to 1,000 times a joule, which would just be a newton times a meter. And remember that force is equal to mass times acceleration, newton's first law, so that's just going to be equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. So I'm going to rearrange that into here and show you how it works out. So right over here you have a newton times a meter is a joule, and you have to make it a kilojoule because the units here are in kilojoules, so you have to multiply it by a thousand, and again this unit is kilojoules per kilogram, so you have a kilogram on the bottom, so if you cancel some of this stuff out you'll have these kilograms cancel out and you'll have these meters uh, sorry these meters will actually square and you'll be left with the same unit of meters squared per second squared you have a second squared on the bottom um, but you'll have it times 1000 so you do have to multiply this uh, formula or this expression of difference in enthalpies by 1000 so with all that dimensional analysis out of the way, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that this expression simplifies into V2. Velocity 2 is equal to 600.83 meters per second. So now that we have our exit velocity, we can go back to our equation of mass flow rate being equal to velocity times area divided by specific volume because we have all the velocities, the mass flow rates, and we can find those specific volumes from these temperatures and pressures. So first of all, we'll rearrange this expression here to find that area. So we have A1 is equal to mass flow rate 1 times uh, specific volume 1 divided by velocity 1. Now we can just substitute the values that we have. So the mass flow rate we were given as 1.5 kilograms per second. We're going to need to find that specific volume, and we're going to divide it by that velocity of 80 meters per second. So to find that specific volume, we have 280C and 20 bar. It was superheated. So 280C and 20 bar is 0.12 uh, as the specific volume, 0.12 meters cubed per kilogram. That's pretty simple to remember. So... 0.12. So I'm running out of room here, but if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that this is equal to 0.00225, and that's actually in meters squared. And we're asked to find it in centimeters squared. So you just multiply it by 100 twice, or just by um, 10,000 and you'll have that the area for the inlet is equal to 22.5 centimeters squared. So now we just rinse and repeat for the exit. So A2 is equal to the mass flow rate at 2 times the specific volume at 2 divided by the velocity at 2. So again, we have one entrance or one inlet and one exit. So v, uh, M1 is going to be equal to M2. So it's going to be a consistent or a constant 1.5 kilograms per second. Now that specific volume we're going to fetch in a minute. And we did solve for that velocity. So we solved for it right over here. So we have 600.83 in the denominator. And that's going to be meters per second. So to find that specific volume, we have 180C and 7 bar. Turn to our superheated table. So 7 bar and 180C. So it's 0.2847. So we turn back here. So we have 2, whoops, 2847. That's 0. Just got to remember the decimals here. And when you plug this all into a calculator... This here boils down into zero, so I'm just reading off a calculator, 0 0.00071, that's going to be in meters squared, but again we want it in centimeters, so we just multiply it by 10,000, and we have 7.1, 7 7.1, 7 and I guess if you want the extra decimals it would be 077, 
and that's going to be in centimeters squared.